Hey, welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about MACD divergences, or often called MACD divergences, and uh, why they don't work, and how they sometimes can. So first of all, let's talk about um, why they don't necessarily work. A lot of people use them as an entry for going long or short. So for example, here we have a little bit of a higher high, and then we go down to MACD, and MACD has a lower high, so that's your divergence. And does it work? Well, let's see. It uh, looks pretty good, doesn't it? By the way, you've got two very red bars there. And so you can look at your candlestick bars and say, wow, yep, we've got uh, wide range bars, very um, bearish bars, and even volume is picking up as we go to the downside. So it's looking pretty good on many different fronts. And then, of course, the market comes around and, yep, does seem to go down a little bit. Oh, wait, 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 nope, nope, going back up, 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 up. Okay, so it did not work, made a higher high after that. So let's talk about why. And we'll scroll back here a little bit. So first of all, the MACD is made up of um, traditionally two lines, but you can add a third uh, element as well. So you've got your MACD line. I've got it in red here. And the MACD line is simply the difference between two exponential moving averages. And I've got them up here. This is the tr these are the traditional numbers, 12 and 26. So the difference between these two moving averages will be your MACD line. So I've got them plotted here. The green line is the 12 period EMA and the red line is the 26 EMA. Okay, that one and that one. And so when they cross, such as right there, then your MACD line, the red line, will cross the zero line. And the zero line is right there. So that's the first thing, is that that's what the zero line means, is that there's zero difference between these two moving averages. So as long as there is space between those two moving averages, in this case, with the 12 EMA above the 26 EMA, then the MACD line, my red line, will be above zero. Now the black line here, that's called the signal line, and that's just a nine period moving average of the MACD line, of the red uh, line. So it's just a nine period moving average of the red line, that's all that is. So that's how you read the indicator. Now you can also put in what they call a histogram, or uh, that's a horrible name for it. It's really, histogram just is the way of plotting something. You can plot pretty much anything as a histogram. But a lot of times the indicators call it a histogram. Um, better term for it, more accurate term would be the difference or diff, because that's plotting the difference between these two lines, the MACD line and the signal line. We're not gonna talk about that today, uh, maybe another day, but I wanna just focus on our topic of divergences here today. So uh, we saw that that didn't work. So why is that? That's because now that you understand how the indicator works, all this is doing is measuring acceleration or deceleration. Um, the MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence, and that is an excellent term for it because it is measuring the space between these two moving averages. So as the 12 moving average is moving away from the 26 moving average, you see then your MACD line will be going up. Now, so there's a lot of space here. It's getting bigger and bigger, and then it get, doesn't get so big, right? What happens is they don't cross or anything, but now they're actually converging a little bit. So the space between them is not as big. This is getting a little bit, uh, you know what? Let's bring this really big upscale here, and maybe we can show it a little easier. So in other words, the difference here, you see, it's, um, well, you can see it even on the 12-period uh, the moving average, kind of angles in, whereas before it's angling up, and then it angles back in. So that's why the MACD line kind of goes flatter here. It's just because the um, distance between the two lines is starting to close a little bit. Okay, then this they open back up again and the MACD line starts going back up. So it's measuring acceleration, if you will, and based on those two moving averages. Now, when we get over here to the divergence that we saw, 
Therefore, we see a lower high here. Well, all that really means is that, sure, now the space uh, between these two moving averages is just that, as opposed to what it had been before, which was bigger. And that's all it means. So you have to ask yourself, well, how significant is that really in the market move? Is that, does that mean the market's going to reverse just because two moving averages started coming closer together a little bit? The market's going to have these natural oscillations of acceleration, deceleration. And that is actually a healthier trend or a more sustainable trend, a trend that can last longer because people are coming in over a period, more for a period of time. If you have everybody coming all at once, then you know, essentially, theoretically, there's nobody left to come in and the trend ends sooner. It's kind of the general concept. All right, so um, that didn't work out too well. Then we come over here and we got another one. Now that one works out pretty good. So here, if we look at this one real quick, you'll see that we have a higher high and, and the um, MACD a lower high. So here's the big question. How would we determine that this one we looked at before would not work and this one would? Now, some people call this a triple divergence, and they'll trade triple divergences. Don't need to make it that complicated. Let me show you how to determine which one will work and which one will not. So this is where our first divergence was right here. And if you'll notice, what I've done is I've brought up a weekly chart of the same market over on the right now. And this is going to be our key, is that we're going to be watching MACD on the longer term chart as well. So we've got daily on the left, weekly on the right. Here is our first divergence, and if you notice, MACD is coming down a little bit because there's a little bit of a retrace on the weekly, but again, that's normal, normal oscillations, and that one did not work, but um, MACD is still up, and it's still above its signal line, and so the market continues to go up. Here we get our second divergence. Again, I wouldn't trade it there either, by the way. Not enough confirmation, but as we move forward, we do get an opportunity, and here it is. Now, if you'll notice, we get the MACD line crossing below the signal line on the weekly chart. Also, we get a nice candlestick pattern on the daily, but we had that on the previous signal as well. Also, we're getting below uh, both moving averages. So we're getting below the 26 EMA on the daily chart. And we had that opportunity as well over on the last one. So the key is there's some good stuff going on here, but there was on the last one as well. But what's even more important is that we have multiple time frames confirming this trade. And the cross of the MACD line with the signal line on the weekly, that's what I'm looking for. So a lot of people will look at the trend of the longer term time frame to confirm their trades. I think that's waiting too late. Waiting to get the confirmation of trend on the longer term time frame to take your trades is too late because trend is a lagging indicator, a much, a very lagging indicator. And so the difference between our daily and weekly charts is five times, right? One day or five days in a week. So five to one ratio means that the daily chart's five times slower than the weekly, I'm sorry, the weekly chart is five times slower than the daily. And then you apply a lagging indicator onto that and well, your signals are just gonna be super late all the time. So I like to use MACD is one option. You can use any other type of what they call momentum indicators. MACD is considered a momentum indicator on your longer time frame to confirm your trades on your shorter time frame. So give it a try. I think that you'll find that it's a, a much more precise way of confirming your setups, whether they be MACD divergences or anything else on the shorter time frame. So if you like this video, please understand, sure, it's free, but if you got value from it, you have an obligation to pay it forward by clicking on the share button below and share it with other people. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon below and leave a comment. That really encourages me to create more free tutorials for you. Also, I'm giving away one of my favorite trade strategies it's called the rubber band trade. It has a super high win-loss ratio and it's a pretty simple trade. I can teach you this in about 26 short minutes. You can get that video explaining the rubber band trade absolutely free by clicking on the image in the top left corner or if you're on a mobile device then click on the little eye with a circle around it in the top right corner of this video and if you're not watching on youtube then there's probably a link below this video or an opt-in form on the side once you do that i'll personally email the video to you with